a series of little windows around the top through which the seeds can escape. This arrangement makes fairly certain that they will not all fall in one place. There is very little fear of the opium poppy becoming extinct when you see what an enormous family each poppy produces. And there are lots more to come yet. Under the microscope, these particular flower seeds make the most attractive patterns. They are beautiful and in themselves harmless and innocent things. Yet they are the curse of the East. They are the origin of dope. They are the seeds of the opium puppy. Under the earth, the seed swells and the young puppy plant begins to grow, root first. soon puts out hairs through which it draws nourishment from the soil. These root hairs are particularly fragile and easily destroyed as every gardener knows who ever tried to transplant a puppy. Strengthened with the food supplied through its root, the young plant manages to pull itself out of the seed case. The stem is bent into an elbow which does all the pushing so that the young leaves are not bruised or crushed. Once above the ground, the baby puppy begins to sway backwards and forwards, rejoicing in the light and air. Soon, the leaves unfurl and the flower bud appears. The puppy plant is a quick grower, and if well fed, can easily develop to do is taller than a man. But it is very dependent on good nourishment and if it is underfed like this one, reared in a flower pot, it grows no taller than a man's hand. The flower bud is protected by a cap which comes away in two sections and is easily thrown off. The pot opens early in the morning as soon as day dawns. and it closes again at sunset, wrapping its petals across each other to protect the center of the flower from dew. In the center are the anthers, the part of the flower which produces pollen, a fine powder which fertilizes other puppies. You can see the anthers gradually ripening and opening away from the seed capsule in the center and producing pollen. This pollen is much sought after by bees who use it as food and who fertilize the puppies by carrying pollen from one flower to another on their feet. When the puppy has got rid of its own pollen and been fertilized with pollen from another flower, it throws off its petals and the seed capsule develops. Within this capsule, are thousands and thousands of seeds which gradually ripen and change color. When they are ready to, to be scattered abroad, the capsule... If you break or cut the stem of the puppy, a white fluid oozes out. This fluid, called latex, 
is highly poisonous and is a puppy's sole weapon against enemies. But the latex is full of opium and is greedily devoured by some drug fiends of the insect world who collect on the poppy leaves and stem to dope themselves. The capsule which guards the precious seeds is particularly full of extra poisonous latex. And these thick tear-like drops are the basis of commercial opium. The odd thing about the latex is that a few seconds after it leaves the plant, it separates into a clear fluid and a solid substance opium. Under the microscope, you can see this division going on. The latex making patterns as wild and fantastic as any dreams that it will afterwards produce in the brain of an opium smoker. In the east, the latex is spread on boards for the fluid to evaporate and the opium to dry. The dried opium is then scraped off the boards. It is carefully weighed into the right amount for smoking. Then rolled into shape. And finally wrapped up. It is a common enough sight in Asia to see a man lighting his opium pipe with a red hot curl from a brazier. And he is soon stretched in a heavily drugged sleep. But this pleasure exacts payment. This trembling old beggar was once one of the healthiest and richest men in a Persian town. Now he staggers on his way, doped the slave of the opium puppy.